to see you. My name is Joma, your favorite host on your favorite book review channel. If this is your first time here, kindly click the subscribe button so you won't miss out on any any updates on our book reviews. So we shall be continuing from where we you know started. Today we shall be treating happy three on our wonderful wonderful interesting book the seven habits of highly effective people but just a little recap from where we came from you know like from where we started and how it's going we talked about habit one habit one is um to be proactive and habit two is beginning with the end in mind you 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 would want to as if new the first time out on this channel to go back and you know see all of those videos so you don't miss out on anything so habit one talked about being proactive, you know how to act before you are acted upon, how not to let your circumstances affect your decision, how to decide the turnout of your events. And habit two talked about beginning with the end in mind, you know if you're going somewhere, what do you want to achieve? You know, before you embark on that mission, you need to list out the things you're trying to achieve so that it, it, it will help your decision, it will help your stock taking you know how people we we ought to take stock of our life so it'll help you to know okay i've come this far am i achieving the the things i said i was going to achieve so you have to begin every journey with the end in mind be the relationship whatever it is so down to habit three putting first things first so i would like to start with the opening um i always like to start with you know the opening quote of every chapter because it's really you know it's it, it's really helpful it gives us some certain kind of summary of what the whole chapter is about so he says the things which matter most must never be at the mercy of the things which matter less i like to summarize it by saying we should major in the majors and minor in the minors so some people make the mistake of putting so much of their time into the things that don't matter which i refer to as the minors so we should give first place to the things that matter most and of course give last place to the things that don't matter but but that it can only happen if you have you know written down somewhere the things that you consider most important to you we're going to understand you know how to arrive at those things so let's just just go with me. I'd like to start out by reading the first two questions that were asked, you know, in the opening paragraph of this book, in, in uh, Habit 3. It says, what one thing could you do, you aren't doing now, that if you did on a regular basis, would make a tremendous positive difference in your personal life? That's question one. So question two what one thing in your business or professional life would bring similar results now i'd like also to further i said we'll come back to answer questions later but first let's put habit three in perspective and habit three is the personal fruit the practical fulfillment of habit one and two so habit one says you are the creator you are in charge it's based on the four unique human endowments imagination conscience independence will and particularly self-awareness we really trashed self-awareness when we talked about habit one and then he empowers you to say that an unhealthy program had been given from my childhood from my social mirror and i don't like the ineffective script i can change so habit two is the mental first or mental creation that's beginning with the end in mind your ability to envision where you are going and habit three is the second creation the physical creation because okay beginning with the end in mind now i have to put first things first because i already have a picture of where i'm going to so it's going to help me to you know set things right so habit three is the second creation the physical creation is the fulfillment the actualization the natural emergence of habit one and two, it is also the exercise of independent will. So I'm deciding to put first things first. I'm deciding to put do that, to put first things first. I'd like to, you know, state that this chapter primarily talks about self-management. Like we already know I have my book with me. So please, I made notes because I actually really studied the book. 
so it talks about uh, you know self-management i always like for us to read from the book so we know that we're actually actually studying the book so it says as we examine this endowment in the context of effective self-management we realize it is usually not the dramatic the visible the once in a lifetime up by the bootstraps effort that brings enduring success empowerment comes from learning how to use this great endowment in the decisions we make every day so the degree to which we have developed our independent will in our everyday lives is measured by our personal integrity you know we talked about integrity and being proactive you know having integrity with yourself so it says integrity is fundamentally the value we place on ourselves it is our ability to make and keep commitments to ourselves to walk our talk you know the popular saying talk is cheap so if you walk your talk we know you're really doing the job it is it's honor itself a fundamental part of the character ethic the essence of proactive growth chapter one integrity being proactive yeah <laughs> so since we're talking about self-management it states here effective management is putting first things first while leadership decides what the first things are it is management that puts them first day by day moment by moment management is discipline carrying it out so management is discipline that carries the first things the things that we've written out you know management carries it out yeah so if you are an effective manager of yourself your discipline comes from within remember when we talked when we talked about it in chapter in habit one we said your surrounding your circumstance doesn't affect your decisions so if, to be an effective manager it means your discipline comes from within i'd like to read us something again it says discipline de discipline derived from disciple disciple to a philosophy disciple to a set of principles disciple to a set of values disciple to an overriding purpose to a subordinate goal or a person who represents that goal you are a disciple a follower of your own deep values and their source and you have the will the integrity to subordinate your feelings your impulses your moods <laughs> your moods to those values you know we already stated that uh, proactive people are not they don't they are not mood based or weather based or whatever based so in spite of your mood you are supposed to live by the set rules that you have written for yourself since we are talking about self-management we ought to i wrote something down here organize and execute around priorities priorities so uh like i already mentioned earlier i said this is like majoring in the majors and of course giving minor importance to the things that you know matter less you get what we're talking about we must know that time management is not really time management it is self-management because you are the one spending the time so if you manage yourself that is you managing your time i wrote i wrote something here again it says satisfaction is a function of expectation as well as realization when we defined effectiveness when we started out with this book in the first video we, we, we said effectiveness when you say thing is effective is when the thing is actually giving you the desired result so satisfaction is a function of expectation as well as realization so you could substitute satisfaction for effectiveness effectiveness is a function of expectation as well as realization so you set the goals but you can only be satisfied or be effective if you actually hit those expectations by realizing them so the author went ahead to design us a time management matrix we're putting it up on the screen now so that we can have a view of what it looks like he categorized our activities into urgent not urgent important not important we all know that so we we have events that we can place or activities that we can place around this you know four categories it's urgent but it's not important it's important but it's not urgent it's not important and it's not urgent if you allow yourself to you know be acted upon you know to to just get up and go you are not managing yourself 
those your activities are the ones managing you so the one that presses more on you is the one that you give urgent attention to that is not how proactive people are supposed to live we already established that you know right from the beginning of this book and we're going to have a better explanation so that being said i'd like to read something that i i, I penned down from the book it said urgent matters are sometimes important they press on us they require immediate action Oftentimes, they are not important, but they still press on us for attention because they are urgent. Example, a phone call. You get, if my phone keeps ringing, but I don't want to pick and I have to pick, I have to pick to be like, can I call you back? You know, I had to attend to that. So that's just, you know, a mild example you get. But important matters, on the other hand, has to do with results. So they don't press on us, but they are important example having a good exercise plan is not urgent I'm, I'm gaining weight it may not show up in two three weeks but as time goes on as i spend my life as i spend my time i see the man i'm getting obeyed what's going on you get so this it was important that i i i i should exercise but it didn't press on me you get so important issues are are, are a long-term issue so but they need they need attention but they don't press on us i always like for us to read something from the book in you know every time as we go intermittently said we react to urgent matters important matters that are not urgent require more initiative more proactivity we must act to seize opportunity to make things happen if we don't practice habit two which is you know beginning with the end in mind if we don't have a clear idea of what is important, of the results we desire in our lives, we are easily diverted into responding to the urgent. But I just want to talk about the time management matrix table a bit so I can explain things. I'll put it back right up on the screen so that we're together on this. So this activity one is categorized urgent and important. So crisis, pressing problems, deadline driven projects. Activity two, not urgent, but important, prevention, PC activities, relationship building, recognizing new opportunities, planning, and recreation. Activity three, urgent but not important. Interruptions, call, some calls, some mails, some reports, some meetings, proximate, pressing matters, popular activities. Activity four is not urgent and not important. Trivia, busy work, some mails, some phone calls, time wasters, pleasant activities like we we've already discussed right it is better for you to identify your activities which is urgent which is not so you know how to you know accord priority if you don't do that some persons just live their lives and just manage crisis proactive people don't manage crisis if you go back to the 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 picture you'd see that in activity two of urgent not urgent but important you will see that prevention is that proactive people are preventing people. I rather you know prevent something from happening by being proactive and acting upon it than waiting for it to get urgent and then I have to be managing crisis. People who are proactive are not crisis managers. Reactive people, on the other hand, they just want to stay in wine and complain, and then next thing they are having to manage the same situation they were complaining about. You get because it is now you know a do or die affair. We ought not to live like that. When we have our uh, activities, you know, categorized in other of importance and not urgency and not, and we, we stick to it, our effectiveness, the author says it takes a quantum leap. You'd, you'd look back on your life like, you know, six months later and be like, wow, I have changed. Change is intentional. Change has to be intended. Like, I have to want to change because change is consistent if i am not changing things things will change me so you know i better be the one to change things i mean it gives me the opportunity to be the decider like we already stated of the events of the turnout of the events you must also know that effective people say no a lot yes have you ever met someone who you consider this person is mean because they said no to you know attending a party attending an event it's because they consider that man, this event is not going to benefit me in any way so when you find people who say no a lot just you know be sincere enough to yourself and you know take it take just do a summary do a review on their life you'll see that they are actually effective 
to a certain degree because they are they they decide or they they don't want the distractions that will you know make them deviate from their life's goal or mission i wrote something down here i said to say yes to important priorities you have to learn to say no to unimportant activities urgent activities work on you we already said that while you work on important activities so pressing issues someone a family member falls ill is urgent but it wasn't important but so urgent issues work on you because you have to respond is urgent but for important matters they don't work on you you work on them okay i want to be able to you know know how to play the keyboard i want to know how to program i want to know how to bake it is important but it doesn't press on you so you press on it so you get you know your desired result important activities that are neglected soon become urgent so i am supposed to be on a diet and i'm not it was important but it wasn't urgent and i neglected it trust me it's soon going to be urgent i may have to now start living on drugs to survive i may now have a terminal disease because i neglected my health we should never hesitate don't be hesitant to say no if you think that a certain activity is not important, the author told us a story about how his wife was invited to be on a particular board or uh, she had to accept. But her friend didn't accept because she felt like, look, I cannot be in this project. I'm going to support you, but this is not my priority right now. I'm refusing it, you know. And his wife, you know, went ahead to regret. She was like, I wish I had, I wish I had, you know, refused, you know, just like she did. You get, we have to want to say no when we don't want to say yes. You don't, you don't have to be a man pleaser because at the end of the day, if you're a failure, people will laugh at you. So you want to make the most use of the time that you have because you don't have all the time to be effective. Of course, there's such a thing as retirement. You get, well, let me read us something here. I said, I don't mean to imply that you shouldn't be involved in significant projects. This is his disclaimer. <laughs> Those things are important, but you have to decide what your highest priorities are and have the courage, the, the courage. So that's pleas pleasantly smiling, non apologetically to say no to other things. And the way you do that is by having a bigger yes burning inside of you so if i don't have a bigger yes to be productive if i don't have a bigger yes burning inside of me to become better i would say yes to every, i would say yes to everything so when i say no to something it means there's a big guy yes burning in me when i say no to something it means there's a big guy yes you what am i trying to say a no means a yes in me and a yes means a no you understand what i'm trying to say so don't try to please people by you know wanting to accept all of their invitations it's not necessary so from my notes I wrote here I said sometimes even when the urgent is good the good can keep you from your best the essence of effective time management and life management is to organize and execute around balanced priorities so you have to organize around that anything that falls short of that is not necessary he also wrote here I said we say yes or no to things daily usually many times a day a center of correct principles and a focus on our personal mission empowers us with the wisdom to make those judgments effectively. So that's why, like we stated, we, it's important for us to have like a, a personal mission statement. The author also advised, and which I think is also good, I do it a lot. Like I do it, a lot. It, it even became more serious after I read this book earlier this year, like I stated. So he advised us to organize our life or manage our time on a weekly basis. So say from the beginning of your week, you should know how your week should run. So at the end of your week, you should be able to take a stock. Okay, did I achieve things I, you know, laid out to achieve? So weekly basis, because sometimes if you do it on a monthly, you could forget. You could forget that, okay, I was supposed to do this. But if you do weekly basis, it's a short term. So you already can take stock, you know, immediately, immediately. Yeah. We must know that from the time management um, matrix that we posted up on the screen earlier, quadrant two is where the... the important things are they won't press on us but they expect us to work on them because in the long run we would be in major crisis if we don't do that you get we mentioned relationships we mentioned well building uh relationship building we mentioned recognizing new opportunities we mentioned preventions and production capability activities we talked about the p slash pc balance in 
habit one when we started so quadrant two is characterized by a few um important criteria there are six of them coherence balance focus people dimension flexibility and portability but i'm just going to talk about coherence and balance you know for us to so is that coherence suggests that there's a harmony unity and integrity between your vision your mission your roles your goals your priority and your plans and your desires and discipline you get said in your planner there should be a place for your personal mission statement so that you can constantly refer to it there's also there, there also needs to be a place for you for your roles and for both short-term and long-term goals balance your tool should help you keep balance in your life to identify your various roles and keep them right in front of you so that you don't forget so that you don't neglect important areas such as health your family professional preparation or personal development so quadrant two helps you to actually have a balanced life so we stated that one of the characteristics is flexibility and portability it has to be flexible you get you you wrote the plan so it has to be flexible for you it shouldn't control you you should control it you have that power and it also has to be portable so that you can have access to it wherever you are you don't have to write it on a board that you cannot write it thank god for devices now that we can carry about have your your plan with you so that you can refer to it easily to become an effective person you know this book is also about people relations so you have to identify the different or the various roles that you play as a person in your life and in life of other people so i'm just going to go ahead and read us some of the roles that you know at we play like some of the roles we could play as people so number one is as an individual you have personal development you know you also have a spouse so you have a responsibility to your spouse manager of new products you know those in the working space then you know manager administration chairman united a lot of things you get so you have to identify your role as a brother as a sister as a mother as a father as a whatever so you have to know how to balance that out nobody has to suffer for another person nobody has to suffer nobody and of course because people are important you have to know that with people you don't talk efficiency you talk effectiveness that's why you you have to take those roles into cognizance yeah that's the word so that everybody is given priority your wife or your husband that's your spouse doesn't suffer your children doesn't suffer your job doesn't suffer your leisure activities shouldn't suffer because oh we're gonna play makes jack a dog boy like a dog girl makes jackie <laughs> a dog girl so everything is important you have to balance that that out but you must first of all identify what your roles are then you know place them according to priority and make sure everything balances out because for people to label you all around you know effective it means in every area of your life everything is okay your kids think you're an awesome dad your wife thinks or your husband thinks you're an awesome spouse your boss thinks you're an awesome employee every your friends think you are an awesome friend who listens who cares about them so you we must know that we people since it is it, it is effectiveness we have to be effective in the lives of people now we are going to talk about delegation you know when it has to do with leading people at some point you have to delegate responsibility some people don't like to delegate because they want to do all the job themselves all the jobs themselves but that is it, it will burn you out at some point because you cannot cope with doing everything yourself every single time so we talked about two kinds of delegation one is the gopher delegation and the other is the stewardship delegation so i'd like to read us something here that talks about you know delegation that the author wrote said we accomplish all that we do through delegation either to time or to other people many people refuse to delegate to other people because they feel it takes too much time and effort and they could do the job better themselves but effectively delegating to others is perhaps the single most powerful high leverage activity there is transferring responsibility to other people skilled and trained enables you to give your energies to other high leverage activities delegation means growth both for the individuals and for the organization 
so we understand that it is important for us to learn how to delegate so that will lead us to talking about the two kinds of delegation there is like we mentioned earlier so there's a gofa delegation and there's the stewardship delegation so gofa delegation is defined as it's a kind of delegation where the manager simply instructs his or her team members to do this and to do that and then you know tell me when you get done you get and and also one of the things that um one of the characteristics of gopher delegation is micromanaging because the manager wants to know you know how you're doing what you're doing when you're doing you know the manager is on you like a hawk to find out what's up you get what's going on that's gopher delegation you don't allow the the individual the right to express his or herself in his or her chosen method of you know getting the job done so in whereas in stewardship delegation right the the delegate the delegate which is the individual is allowed to own the job and simply report progress at intervals the manager is mostly required to provide guardian guidance and support when needed so in 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 stewardship delegation you know both the the person delegating and the, dele the individual being delegated, you know, they come to an understanding that this is the result we're trying to achieve. This, this is the, this would be the consequence if you fall short. So, do we have an agreement that you are going to see this through and get it done? By so doing, you have put the person with the responsibility of not falling short because this person feels like if you gave me this responsibility, it means you have a certain level of trust in me. You get so and the author talked about trust in this kind of delegation so he said trust is the highest form of human motivation it brings out the very best in people but it takes time and patience if done correctly that's a stewardship delegation trust is easily built in stewardship and in the end both partners will greatly benefit stewardship delegation takes time and training but it saves so much time in the long run because it properly empowers the delegate to do the job in the period of training, the steward is taught to be his own boss through self-governance and active conscience, bearing in mind the desired result both, both parties agreed upon. So we see that stewardship delegation is the best delegation there is for anybody. For parents, you know, you have to delegate your kids to, you know, do things. And you, and you have to show them that, look, I trust you. I know you can do this. So if you don't trust them, they'll be like, okay, he doesn't trust me, so let me just allow him to do his thing or her thing. To be an effective leader, you must not micromanage because it, it wouldn't even give you peace. You would always want to oversee everything. Just wait for results. And then if, if the person or the individual you've delegated to do something comes for guidance, comes for, you know, help, that is when you should. But you have to allow them the freedom to express themselves on the job and by so do you have to tell the story a lot of stories about delegation i mean you know how he gave he asked his son to mow the lawn and then he you know didn't do it at the time and then they came to an agreement you know he changed from the go far to the stewardship and then it worked people want to be trusted actually and then if you, that that's how to even get the best out of people trust them trust that they can deliver that's how to train them and get the best out of them of course there's a difference between de there's a difference between delegation and abdication abdication is you just give the job and just go and relax that's been if ineffective you must set timelines okay at this point in this project you have to give a report you don't just delegate and then go to bed no as a leader you have to delegate and expect results and follow up on the results but you don't have to watch over your in the person you've delegated as a hawk to make them uncomfortable so let's just know the difference so that we don't mix things up i'll close this by saying that the principle involved in stewardship delegation are correct and applicable to any kind of person or situation. With immature people, you specify fewer desired results and more guidelines, identify more resources, conduct more frequent accountability interviews, and apply more immediate consequences. With more mature people, you have more challenging desired results, fewer guidelines, less frequent accountability and less measurable but more discernible criteria so you see it it's it's it applies to anybody any situation but you just you will just not need to know the degree to which you are requiring reports the intervals at which you're requiring the reports depending on the person you're dealing with so you cannot deal with a child the same way you deal with an adult your intervals of report will vary depending on the person that you are dealing with so 
as we come to the end of this habit number three we must understand that prioritizing our activity is a big step to becoming very effective it is it would be it would be such a sad story if all the things that we've been learning we don't put them to practice one of the opening quotes in this book or the or one of the things the writer stated when we started when you know in the uh, acknowledgement part of the book he said that um to know and not to do is not to know. Because I mean, what's the difference between you and someone who doesn't know because you know what you don't do? So I'd advise us to, you know, put to practice everything that we're learning and, you know, just give your life, just give yourself some time and see how you are going. You don't even need to be the one to spot the change. People around you will spot it. But it has to be genuine to be spotted. It mustn't be faked. You have to decide that you want this change for it to happen. Thank you so much for staying with us as we talk about this this um, habit. I'd like for us for you to join us next time as we would go into the habits that has to deal with public victory. You know, chapter three brings us to the end of the private victory part of the the diagram I showed us that has all the seven habits when we started back in video number one. So we're moving up to, you know, public victory, which deals with, you know, interrelation, interpersonal relationship with other people. You don't want to miss the things we are, we, are, we are going to learn because it's really going to help us to be more effective, which is the aim of actually reviewing or studying this book. So you don't want to miss out on the things that we're going to be discussing in chapter four, five, six, and seven. So please, Stay, you know, glued to this channel as we'll be bringing you the reviews for those chapters shortly. I know you've learned so much. I know you, you, you've come to know so much, and so many mistakes that you've been making, you know, have been made there before you. It's time to make that change and make it now. Thank you, and have a very, very wonderful day. See you next.